we are now going to multiply radicals with different indexes. And so we're looking at a problem like the square root of 5 times the cube root of 2. And there's some rules that we want to make sure we remember, and that's that the nth root of a equals a to the 1 over n. And we want to remember that a times b to the n is a to the n, b to the n. And you're going to want to remember that a to the n to the m is equal to the n times m. And we're going to use this one to turn everything into powers. And we're going to use these two in reverse. So we're going to start by saying that the 5 becomes 5 to the 1 half power. And the 2 becomes 2 to the 1 third power. So now we've gotten rid of our radicals and we've got this times in between them. And we're going to pretend that we're adding these fractions, one-half to one-third, so our LCD is 6, which is 3 over 3, 2 over 2. This gives me 5 to the 3 sixth times 2 to the 2 sixth. Now that's where this one comes in, because remember that 3 sixths is the same as 3 times 1 sixth. So 5 cubed times the 1 sixth power times 2 squared times the 1 sixth power becomes 5 cubed to the 1 sixth power and 2 squared to the 1 sixth power. So I've now used this rule to write them both as the integer on top and the rational on the outside. Now this is why they had to be the same. Notice that these are both 1 6. This is that same n right here. So we're going to factor it out. So we get a single 5 cubed times 2 squared raised to the 1 sixth power. Now I know I can't reduce anything because 5 cubed, there's not 6 of them, and there's not 6 twos, it's only 2 squared. So this means that there's nothing we can do to reduce. So all we need to do is multiply this out. 5 cubed is 125. 2 squared is 4. 125 times 4 is 500. And so my answer is, going back into radical form, the sixth root of 500. This is the same thing as this. But that idea again is to write everything in prime numbers to powers and then use that information to work on. So let me demonstrate what I mean by when I said the prime numbers to powers. Let's look now at the cube root of 20 times the fourth root of 12. Well, 20 is 2 and 10, 2 and 5. 12 is 2 and 6, 2 and 3. So we have 2 squared times 5 to the 1 third power. And here we have 2 squared times 3 to the 1 fourth power. I'm doing this in prime numbers, and there's a very, very, very big reason I'm doing that, and I'll show it later. So now we want the LCD between 3 and 4, and that's 12. So we're going to do 4 fourths and 3 thirds. That gives me 2 squared times 5 to the 4 twelfths, 2 squared times 3 to the 3 twelfths is 2 squared times 5 to the 4th to the 3rd, 2 squared times 3 to the 3rd, oops, not to the 3rd, to the 12th to the 12th. So this gives me 2 squared times 5 to the 4th times 2 squared times 3 to the 3rd, all to the 12th power. Well, let's move our power in. So this becomes 2 to the 8th times 5 to the 4th times 2 squared, nope, 2 to the 6th times 3 cubed, all to the 1 12th. And I want you to notice something. We have 2's. We have these 2's in common. And this gets in the way just a little bit. So we're going to combine them. So we have 14 twos, 5 fours, 3 threes, all the 12th power. Now notice this 14 is bigger than the 12. That means I can take 12 of them and pull a 2 out. And I want to see it here, not later. So we pull that 12 out. That leaves 2 still inside. 5 to the 4th, 3 cubed. This is 4 times 625 times 27. I really don't like that number very much. So I'm going to get out a calculator. And that's going to give me 4 times 625 is 2,500. Times that by 27 is 6,750. 
or 67,500, excuse me. So we get two twelfth roots of 67,500. And I know that this answer is now as simplified as can be because none of my powers on my prime factors are bigger than 12. So make sure you do this in prime powers. Make sure you reduce it. And make sure that you follow these steps in order in order to get your answers.